Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering Swift Basics. This video is going to be including commenting, variables, constants, type annotations, and how to output slash print functionality. Stay tuned to learn more. So before we get started, yeah, you should have a few tool sets pre-installed. So first you're going to have to have some method of compiling and running Swift. Uh, for me, on my MacBook, I have Swift built in, and you can verify that with Swift dash dash version, and as you can see, I have Swift 4.2.1 pre-installed. Alright, and then next you're going to need a text editor. For me, I'm going to be using Emacs, just because uh, I'm familiar with it, and I find it easy to use. But uh, just use the right tool for the job. You don't have to use Emacs, you don't have to use Vim. You could just use uh, something like Atom.io. I mean, whatever you uh, you find useful and it works is good. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and open our testing file. We'll call that test.swift, so emacs test.swift. And as you can see, we have a new text editor window open with, uh, with appending the file test.swift. So the first Swift basic we're gonna be covering is commenting. So I know a lot of people don't think comments are useful in code, but they are absolutely necessary. Uh, for example, if you have a program that's a couple thousand lines long, there's no way you're going to remember what everything does in a couple of months. So this is where commenting would come useful. Uh, basically, we, let's say we have a block of code right here that does, you know, who knows what. And you could say, comment, hey, this is uh, for de-atomizing the atomizer or something like that. I have no clue what that means. It was just an example. But as you can see, Emacs uh, has turned the two slashes, the two forward slashes, to red because it sim uh, symbolizes a comment. So basically, whatever you put in this comment here, when you go to compile and execute the Swift, this won't be executed. So hey, I'm a comment. The compiler does not oops, does not execute me. All right, and as you can see, that's a single line comment because it covers one line and one line only. Let's say if you wanted a multi-line comment, you're gonna be doing a forward slash, an asterisk, we'll do enter, and as you can see, Emacs has auto-completed uh, another asterisk and a backslash. All right, and this is a multi-line comment because it could span multiple lines. This is a multi line comment and as you can see Swift wouldn't uh, execute this multi-line comment either because it is a comment yet again it's very useful when you uh, when you have a long long paragraph that explains uh, what a function does or a class does and you just need that extra space to do it all right that covers lesson one of Swift basics which is commenting now, I will be uh, demonstrating the use of comments throughout uh, this tutorial, just to show you uh, in further details how they work and why they're useful. Which leads us to our next option on the agenda, which is variables. So variables are vital to any programming language because they allow us to store values and reuse them later. So to use variables in uh, Swift, to declare a variable, you're simply going to be using the var keyword and then the variable name, so in this example we'll call it x, and then equals, and then the value you want to set x equal to. So we'll just set x equal to five for this example, and as you can see, that's how you declare a variable. Now it's important to note that the uh, the var keyword here is highlighted in purple because it's, a, uh, it's an official Swift keyword, which means that you cannot do something like var var equals five because var is a keyword. You're not allowed to redefine keywords in, uh, in Swift. Anyways, so now that we have the x variable defined, let's go ahead and save and run this program just to make sure it works. And as you can see, no errors have been outputted. If we were to uh, have made a mistake here, let's say like var x, uh, var x equals some astronomical number that obviously can't be held in a variable, we can see that uh, an error was outputted. Now, don't worry about uh, what that error means at the moment because uh, you're probably not going to run into that error anytime soon. But anyways, let's go ahead and write var x equals 5. And let's say we want a y variable, var y equals 10. 
and we'll say var z equals x plus y. And as you can see, or as you could guess, I should say, is z would be equal to 15 because x references this, uh, the value of 5, the literal 5, and y references the literal 10 here, and then z would be equal to 15. Now, to verify this, we can go ahead and save and run. As you can see, no errors. But let's say we want to actually see the output of z. How would we do that? Well, we could use a built-in function in Swift called print, open close parenthesis, and then we'll put z in there, and that's it. Let's go ahead and save and run that. And as you can see, 15 was outputted because 15 was saved in z, which we just want to print there. All right, let's go ahead and delete that, all this. All right, now let's talk about constants. Constants are basically variables that you don't want to change throughout the program, right? So let's say we have uh, one value, let's say somebody's age, that we don't want to change throughout the program. What we could do is say, let age equal 15, and basically throughout that entire program, or the, uh, the scope of that variable, I should say, age is not allowed to change, else an error will be thrown. So let's go ahead and save and run this to verify it works. As you can see, no errors. And to uh, further verify, let's just redefine age and see what happens. Age equals 17. And as you can see, it says cannot assign to value age is a let constant, which means uh, basically you're not allowed to redefine age because it's a constant declared by the let Swift keyword. All right, but if age were to be a variable, we could easily redefine it without any hassle. And you see, no errors. Let's go ahead and clear that out. And go ahead and open test.swift again. And let's go ahead and move on. All right, next up we have our type annotation patterns. So let's say that we have a fairly large program, around 20,000 lines of code, and we have a couple hundred variables to find in that code. Now it seems a little bit uh, extraneous, and albeit it is, but let's just say for example's sake, that's, uh, that's the case we have on our hands. But anyways, Swift allows us to explicitly define the type of the variable instead of letting the compiler, uh, the compiler determine the type, we can explicitly define the type to allow further clarification of what the variable is. So let's say that instead of doing var x equals 5, uh, 5 being an integer of course, we can explicitly define that x is an integer by saying, hey, var x type of int equals 5. Now this, all this does is explicitly define the type. It's the same thing as saying var x equals 5 except int was explicitly defined right here. All right, and you can also define explicit type with uh, with your let constant, or oh, I, excuse me, you have to do a different ver uh, variable name, so we'll say y, of type int equals 10. Oops, oops. And, uh, and yeah, we can check that this works by saving and running the program. As you can see, no errors were thrown. And you have type annotation, nice and simple. And lastly on our agenda is functions. Now functions have to be one of the most important things in programming because it allows us to encapsulate a uh, specific group of code that executes for a specific purpose. Now functions uh, allow us to reuse code without necessarily uh, typing out what that code does specifically. Which is great because uh, in programming there's a concept a lot of programmers recommend you follow which is called dry. And it just stands for uh, do not repeat yourself. We can show that with a comment. Dry equals do not repeat yourself. Now what I could have done here is, uh, is use a multi-line comment like this. My mistake. As you can see there, let me go ahead and get rid of that. So dry just stands for do not repeat yourself which is, uh, I recommend everyone follow that because it's, you know, keep it simple, stupid, but do not repeat yourself. And that probably should be one word, yeah. Okay, anyways, to declare a function in Swift, you're gonna wanna use that funk keyword. And as you can see, it's highlighted in purple yet again. Funk, uh, we'll say add x and y. As you can see, I used camel casing here, which is basically just capitalizing every, uh, every text entity uh, is the first letter is capitalized basically. All right, so we have func add x and y, and you're gonna have to add a 
open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then you just add a open parenthesis, or open bracket, excuse me, and a close bracket, and that's how you define a function in Swift. Now, to call that function, all you have to do is the function name, and then open close parenthesis. Now, it's important to only call the function after you declare it, else the function will not exist. So, for example, if you were to put add x and y uh, invocation up here, there would be an error because add x and y hasn't yet been defined because we defined it down here. So always make sure you do that, like that, and yeah. So as you can see, you could save that and run that, and no errors have been thrown because uh, it works. And more importantly, uh, the function doesn't yet do anything. So uh, it's important to note that the function name should define what the actual function code does. So in this particular function, we should add x and y. So what we could do is say, let, oops, let x equal five, let y equal 10, and we can return z, which would be equal to x plus y. And we could see uh, the value of this, the, re the return value, by printing that. So let's go ahead and save and run that. And, oh, I messed up. So we actually don't need to define z yet again here. Or actually, we don't have to define z at all because we could just return x plus y. And, oh, so here's a common problem that you'll find in programming. Uh, you have to set the return value of the function in Swift, unlike languages such as JavaScript, and uh, because they are dynamic languages, unlike Swift, which is a static language. We'll get more to that in another in a, uh, another video. But anyways, just know that you have to define the return value by doing something like this. So it's going to be a dash and then a uh, a greater than sign, and then the return type value. So let's go ahead and save that. Oop. My bad. Let's go ahead and save that, and then run that. And as you can see, we got the value 15. Now let's say we wanted to add two strings together. So we could do func add x and y strings, op open close parenthesis, return type is going to be string, open parenthesis, or open bracket again, open or close bracket. And then what we want to do is let x equal hello, let y equal world, and return x plus y. Now, when you add strings together, that's going to be called string concatenation, which basically you're adding strings together, but you know it's not in the same sense as adding numbers together. But anyways, we're going to have to put a space there, just realized. And let's go ahead and invoke this function right under the, uh, the other invocation at x and y strings this time. Go ahead and save and run that. And as you can see, we have the old invocation right here and then the new hello world here. Let's go ahead and add comments of what these functions do. So adds x and y defined in function. Adds x and y strings defined in function and it's also probably important to note in uh, in the functions commenting what the return values are return is x plus y and then same thing for the uh, the string concatenation function return x plus y and as you can see there that is how you use functions in swift Oh, and uh, before I leave, it's also important to note that your function does not have to have a return value. So let's just say func do nothing, oh, let's see, close parenthesis, and we can actually leave out the, uh, the function, uh, the return value here, if we don't return anything in that function. It's basically the same as declaring the return type is void. And as you can see, uh, do nothing is going to do absolutely nothing. In fact, we're just going to declare x equals 5. We'll go down here to invoke the function. Print do nothing. Save and run. And as you can see, the compiler actually uh, gave us a warning that x was never used, but we can safely ignore that. And as you can see here, the return type is empty or rather void. 
Uh, I hope you learned something in this video. Let me know down in the comments if, you, uh, if you're if you looking forward to a part two. And drop a like if you want me to uh, continue doing these tutorial type videos. Thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day.